Hello everybody, my name is Aaliyah and this is um, Crafts by Aaliyah, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be going... One second. Oh my gosh, so I just listened to some of my other videos and I'm probably going to put this in the beginning of the video and there is like a background kind of noise and if that is like too much for you guys or like too distracting i may re-record this video another day but um i can hear myself and i think that you can hear me and understand me but if it's too much let me know and i i will re-record it but for now i'm just gonna like continue and i'm gonna edit it and i'm gonna try to put it out there um this week but let me know if it's like if it's just like uh-uh like I can't I can't deal with the background noise just let me know and I will re-record it maybe like um when I have time so so sorry I'm uh, just gonna warn you there is a little bit of background noise like I don't know where it's coming from because I'm sitting in a quiet room I don't know so yeah Hello you guys, my name is Aaliyah, welcome to Crafts by Aaliyah. Today we're going to be going over some tips on how to make a, um, how to freestyle and how to freehand your crochet pieces. So if you guys want some tips, I'm going to go over how to make a plan, how to have a, the basics, make a plan. Um, I'm going to go over measurements very lightly, I'm not going to go too deep into it. And I'm also gonna um, I'm also gonna go over how um, there's gonna be a lot of trial and error and some tips with that. And I'm also going to give you guys um, a little bit of an example of um, a process of how you were, let's say, to make a cardigan. So if you guys are interested in those type of tips, please stay tuned. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do when you're gonna freehand something is you're gonna wanna have a plan. Um, you don't want to just pick up any old kind of yarn, pick up any old kind of hook, and just start crocheting because usually it's not going to end well. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a plan. So you need to choose, I got my notes right here, um, you're going to need to choose what kind of yarn you want to use, what kind of hook you want to use, how much yarn you're going to need, and what stitch you're going to want to use. So once you get that down, you're pretty much, you know good to go so once you pick yarn if you want it to be lightweight do you want it to be lightweight do you need cotton yarn do you need acrylic yarn and making a blanket you need to figure out what you're gonna make first like are you making a shirt a blanket pants uh, a jacket anything like that pick that first then pick what kind of yarn okay I'm making a shirt okay it's summertime it's really hot um, Am I going to make this in cotton or are going to make this in acrylic? There are some light, lighter weight acrylic or acrylic blends out there that do work perfectly fine in the summertime. Um, you know, figure it out. What kind of brand? Because not every single brand acrylic is the same. Like, you got Red Heart Acrylic, Karen Simply Soft Acrylic. Completely two different feels, two different things. Even though they're both acrylic, it's different. Um, so, yeah. And then you need to choose what kind of hook you're going to use. Or is this going to be a looser stitch, a tighter stitch? What kind of yarn am I working with? Figure out what kind of hook you want to use first. And then also, if you're doing, if you're basing it off of something else, like if you saw a picture online or on Pinterest or from an online clothing store or something like that, you want to make sure you have that picture handy. What I like to do is just take a screenshot on my phone and have it handy so that when I'm making my piece, I can go back and I can refer to it. Um, very easily so it's like very readily available so I don't have to like go back on Pinterest try to find that picture or go scroll through Instagram and try to find that picture like just take it right when you see something you like take a screenshot of it trust me even if you're not even gonna use it or you don't think you're gonna use it just take a screenshot anyway and the next tip I like I'm gonna give you guys for like the basics is to um, use a foundation stitch because you're kind of going into it blind. I mean, you are going into it blind. So when you're you when you're chaining, let's say you're making a, a shirt, right? You're trying to make a, a shirt. If you just if you just chain like twenty 
sorry, not 20. If you just chain like 50 chains and then you go back into those chains with single crochet and then you hold it up and you're like, oh my gosh, this is way too long. You're gonna have to take apart everything that you just did. But if you're doing foundation rows, you can keep, you can go, you can measure as you go. So you make like 40, you hold it up, it's like, oh, that's too long. You could just take a couple out, you know? Or, oh, I need to make a couple more. Just make some more. Like, so you don't have to take apart all your work. Like, I really do recommend using foundation stitches. I do have a video on how to do foundation stitches for a single crochet, half double crochet. And double crochet, I'm going to link it somewhere down below, up above, you know. So, yes, it's very adjustable and it's very easy to work with. So, I do recommend that. So, next thing I want to talk about when it comes to making a plan is what kind of format you are going to make your piece in. So, are you going to make it in panels? Or are you going to make it in rounds? And what I mean, what I mean by panels is that are you going to make two pieces, stitch them together, or are you going to continuously go in rounds? So, you need to figure that out. Um, before you start your work too because that's going to determine if you're starting from the, the top to the bottom from the bottom to the top if you're making your panels are you going from left to right you know you just need to kind of figure out the format of your um, your piece first and also with sleeves too um, you need to figure out if you're going to be making a sweater or a cardigan are you going to make the sleeves separate and then attach them or are you going to add the sleeve from the work down you know and i do have a video that i did a, a cropped sweater where i made sleeves separate and attached them i'm gonna link that video as well for you guys so you can use that as a reference on how to attach sleeves if you are having any trouble with that so yeah so the next thing i'm going to talk about is measurements you guys i get so many questions about measurements and guess what I forgot my measuring tape so I'll be right back okay so I have my measuring tape I get so many questions on measuring tape on how you measure yourself how do you measure your crochet pieces this and that this and that so I'm gonna go over it briefly and kind of try to answer the most basic questions and if I don't go into it enough you guys make sure you comment down below or message me if you want me to do a completely dedicated video on how to do measurements like in depth really good video because if you're if you're a beginner and you're starting to make work for other people and all you have is their measurements it can be it's intimidating like oh gosh I want to make sure that this fits this person and trust me I've had clients that I've used their measurements and maybe they measured themselves incorrectly or maybe I didn't do it correctly and they uh, have told me hey this doesn't fit and you know we go from there on how to fix that situation um, but don't think I'm perfect because I make I make mistakes too but this is just how I measure things so first I'm gonna go I'm so sorry it's like this hair in my face what is it I'm gonna go over how to I'm gonna go over how to measure it yourself. So usually, usually when you're freehanding something, you're not making it for a client. You're not like, oh, I'm just gonna freehand this for see you. I've never made it before, I'm just gonna wing it. Like usually that's not the case. But um, usually you're making it for yourself. So I'm gonna go over how to measure yourself. So the three main measurements that you're gonna need are your bust, your waist, and your hips. So your bust, is here you're gonna go around the largest part around your um, basically the largest part around your breast like this and I know the lighting you can't see the numbers but y'all y'all don't need to see my measurements you know but it's the largest part around your breast like this and that's your bust measurement and when you're measuring things you don't want to you don't want to like pull the measuring tape super tight because that's not going to feel comfortable on you and you also don't want to like just kind of like measure it loose because then you have a loosey loosey goosey top and you don't want that so you want to kind of like find a comfortable secure tension when you're measuring yourself to kind of make sure things fit good now I know I know my 
I know my measure measurements already because you know I measure myself so much and I make so many like usually when I'm making a piece I make it for myself first and then I'll put it for sale if I like it and it's like easily easily replicable replicable I think that's the word um so yeah when you're going around your bust when you're on your button your bust you want to make it a little like maybe half an inch tighter because you you want it to sit up nice on yourself like especially if you're making something strapless you want to make sure <clears throat> excuse me that it sits on you um so you want to make sure that you, you're able to at least put your index finger around but you feel that the measuring tape is is pretty tight if you can put two fingers down like this see how it's like two fingers you, you might want to tighten it a little bit just just go with little bit by little bit and I'd like to round up to the nearest half inch so I don't do the three quarters and all that kind of stuff I go to the nearest half inch so you just want to make sure that it's comfortably a comfortable tension around yourself now the next measurement you want to do is your waist that's the next most important one so I'll stand up so you want to go around your waist and it's the same thing you want to make sure that it is tight but not too tight now the one thing is when you're making um, something um, when you're using measurement for your waist it's usually gonna be pants or shorts so you don't want to be it to be too tight because mind you you have to get whatever you're making up over your hips you know up over your hips now if you have a very small waist and a very wide nice hips um, you're gonna want to add a drawstring I add a drawstring anyway even though my hip to waist measurement isn't that big of a difference I use a measuring I mean I I use a drawstring anyway because I like things to fit tight around my waist so yeah so it's the same thing when you're going around your waist you want to make sure that it's a comfortable tension don't put it too tight you know you want things to fit properly and don't make it too loose because you don't want nothing to be saggy but mind you if you if you're planning on adding a drawstring don't worry about it too much just make sure that you kind of measure it where it is don't pull the measuring tape on you just kind of sit it exactly where it's supposed to go and you know use the fingers one finger is good if you can fit two ting two fingers you might want to tighten it just a bit so yeah and then for your hips your hips are the widest part around your your butt basically so it's the widest part and for this part you really don't want to um go too tight you want to make sure that it fits properly so when you're putting the measuring tape put it around like this and you measure it the way it is don't pull it tight make sure that is sitting on you properly the way it's supposed to and that's how you get your measurements so boom step one you've written your measurements down now you got this crochet project and you're trying to match it to your measurement okay so now you have your measurements but you don't know what to do with them like you have your measurements oh my gosh, sorry you have your measurements but you need to match it to your crochet piece so i have this um project that i started last night i'm just going to use it for an example on how to measure things properly so let's go with um my hips so my hips are a 35 right and I'm making something that I need to go around my hips. So what I like to do is I like to take 35 on my measuring tape, boom, and I divide it by two. You can use your calculator, but I usually just grab the measuring tape, fold it in half at the point. Can you see? Take your measuring tape, whatever measurement you have, divide it by two. 
So 35 divided by 2 is 17 and a half. So if I'm making shorts or something, if I'm working around and making pants, I need the width of that to be 17 and a half in order for it to fit all my hips properly. So I take my piece, whatever I'm working on, let's just pretend that I'm making shorts, right? So I take my piece and I just go ahead and measure it. But what I like to do is I stretch my work just the smallest amount. You don't want to stretch it too crazy because then when you put your piece on it, it's going to be too tight. So because you want it to fit nice. So you want to stretch it a little bit because when you put things on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a little bit. You want it to have a little wiggle room in it, you know. So I take my measuring tape. And this is it's weird because I'm really not making shorts or nothing with this. But this does measure right to about 17 and a half. If you can see, this does measure about to 17 and a half. Um, when I pull it, just the smallest amount, I pull it a little bit. So, yes. So, pull it a little bit when you're measuring. But don't pull it too much because then it's going to be too tight and also you don't want it to be too loose either you know so just kind of like use your use like i want to say use your common sense because that's kind of rude but just kind of like however you want your piece to fit on you that's how you should measure it if you want it to fit loose on you then don't stretch your work when you measure it if you want it to fit a little bit tight on you stretch your work a little bit when you measure it you know so that is all I'm going to cover when it comes to measurements. If you guys want <clears throat> something a little bit more in-depth, make sure you comment down below and be like, yes, I want a full, dedicated, in-depth video on how to measure yourself. And I'll actually like make some shorts or something. Or maybe I could go live on Instagram or I could go live on YouTube. I can go live on YouTube now. And I'll make some shorts with you guys like like an hour hour and a half i can make some shorts with you guys and show the process of how i make the shorts and measure them so let me know okay so another thing is i'm going to talk about it's kind of like um, trial and error and how when you're freestyling or when you're freehanding things there's going to be a lot of trial and error there's going to be a lot of um taking things apart, frogging them, remaking it, like, oh, this isn't coming out the way I wanted it to, redoing it. There's going to be a lot of that. So don't be discouraged if on your first try of making something, it doesn't come out the way you want it to be, because that's normal. Like, that's super normal. Everybody deals with that. So it is okay to um, kind of mess things up and have to redo it like that's perfect point even when you're following a pattern or when you're following following a video you, you get that you can mess things up and have to redo it so don't be discouraged you know when you're when you're crocheting already you need to have a sense of patience in the first place so there's that and then also what was i gonna say um you're th everything doesn't have to be super perfect when you're freehanding something because usually when I'm freehanding something I'm already in my head I'm gonna make it twice anyway because the first one is kind of just like a tester and then like let me remake it and see how I can make it better you know like maybe I could have did this differently and, and you know take this shortcut here or something like that you know so uh, it doesn't have to be completely super perfect like just do the best you can as long as it looks nice that's all that matters, right? If it, if it looks nice, that's what matters. If you if you have the extra stitch here, and just be careful, just make sure you're making a note that when you are um, crocheting to look at your work as you go, you don't want to just be crocheting, not paying attention, and then you're like, oh my God, 10 rows back, I skipped a stitch. That's terrible. But uh, just make sure you pay attention when you're free handing things and uh, if you have to put two stitches in somewhere or decrease somewhere, increase somewhere random, it's okay. Especially on the end. You know, on the end, if you get to the end and you're like, oh my god, I missed up one stitch somewhere, I just go back halfway, add an extra stitch, 
and finish my rope just like that. So, and you, for the most part, nobody, you can't even tell for the most part. So, yes, just don't, just kind of relax and like, this is like, it's for fun. You know, when you're freehanding, it's supposed to be a fun experience. It's supposed to be not as stressful as trying to follow a pattern or trying to follow a video. So, yes. And one other tip I have is to just always make a border around whatever you're making the top. Go around the bottom with a single crochet, go around the neckline with a single crochet. Anything you're making, really, just make sure you have like a nice border. This kind of ties everything in together and just kind of makes everything look nice. Okay, so lastly, one other thing I wanted to talk about is oops, when you guys are freestyling stuff or when you're freehanding something or you're looking to make something and you kind of like got, get stuck on how to do a specific technique, you guys really should just really use YouTube. Like, I'm telling you, there's, like, you should already know, there's so many videos on YouTube. I get so many questions in my uh, Instagram, which I don't mind, you know, ask me questions if you have questions, because um, I will point you in the right direction. But I get so many questions in my um, inbox on Instagram like how do I make this and I'm like there's a there's you guys should check YouTube because there's a lot of visual videos that are going to do you much better than me trying to type out um, how to do something when there's like already videos on YouTube now that's it's one thing if you've already checked YouTube and you've already checked everything and you're like Oh my gosh, I still don't get it. Let me let me ask this person. That's 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 different. But if there's like if you're just staying at home and you're like, I really want to make a tube top. I'm not sure how to make the tube top. And you just go and, and you just go to to my inbox and you're like, Aaliyah, how do I make a tube top? I'm I'm gonna say go check YouTube because there's there's a lot of videos and patterns out there on how to make a tube top. Like, come on, you guys. Now, that's just an example. But, um, I just, I just, you got, you got to do research when you're freehanding stuff or if you're, like, looking to combine different techniques um, together to kind of try and make something up of your own. You, you have to do research. You have to watch a lot of YouTube videos. Watch, uh, do a lot of searching on the internet. Like, the internet is great. Trust me. Um, Pinterest is a good resource to use. Pinterest is... Uh, a little bit more work you have to do a little bit more searching because there are a lot of like weird links on YouTube but trust me YouTube is great um, and YouTube is great I mean this platform that I'm using that we're all using is a great resource we all know that so you guys search it up first look it up first and don't just stop on the first page don't even stop on the second page sometimes I'm searching on YouTube and I and I have to go a couple pages, three or four pages, because the video I really like could be far back because YouTube has this super weird, crazy algorithm where they don't show certain videos on the first and second page. You know, they might be a couple pages back.